Walking the Camino de Santiago is an amazing experience, but it comes with a catch. Accommodation on the Camino, well, it's very different to what you've experienced before. And if you don't understand those differences, you risk missing out on some life-changing memories. So in this video, I show you how to avoid the six biggest Camino accommodation mistakes so you don't have to worry and can have the trip of a lifetime. The people who walk the Camino de Santiago are referred to as pilgrims, and traditional pilgrim hostels are called albergues. The main types are municipal albergues, which are run by local government, donativo albergues, which are donation-based, and private albergues. There are also pensiones, which are a bit like guest houses or B&Bs, paradors, which are high-end hotels built in old Spanish buildings, and plain old hotels. <coughs> Do not forget one of these. This will give you access to pilgrim only accommodation. And this, well, this is a pilgrim passport, also known as a credential. And this will enable you to stay in cheap accommodation along the Camino, such as municipal albergues. If you're walking the Camino Frances, you can purchase one from the pilgrim office in St. Jean Pied de Port. If you're walking the Portuguese Camino from Porto, you can pick one up from the cathedral. Each albergue you stay in will stamp your pilgrim passport. And when you get to Santiago, be sure to take your passport full of stamps to the pilgrim office. You can also buy them online. Links below. Albergues supply you with a disposable bed sheet and pillowcase. If you're lucky, they might have some blankets, but don't forget to take something to sleep in. If you're walking in winter into early spring, then you will need to take a sleeping bag. If you're walking in the warmer months, then you will need to take a sleeping bag liner, which is lightweight and packs away to nothing. Now, my next point is one I really hope you can avoid. Avoiding snores can be a bit like playing roulette. Some nights are peaceful and you think, ah, no one on Camino has any sinus problems at all. Whereas other nights can be like, You're a braver person than me if you can stay in an albergue without a pair of these. <laughs> and these, these are earplugs. And for me, these are a must for communal living on the Camino. And my second tip, if you're unfortunate enough to suffer a night of snoring delights, then consider booking a private room for the next night or two. That way you can catch up on some well-needed rest. <laughs> Now, this point might cause a bit of controversy, but some of the larger private albergues are lifeless and they lack atmosphere. Sure, they may look fancy with their sleeping pods and modern facilities, but they don't promote connection, which I truly believe is such a special part of the Camino. My tip? Seek out the great and the good albergues, because there are some amazingly run small private albergues on the Camino such as Casa Susi and Alberg Verde on the Camino Frances and Casa di Fernanda on the Camino Portuguese. They all do beautiful home-cooked communal meals. The communal meal is the secret sauce that brings strangers together on the Camino. Now beds in private albergues can be reserved, which leads me on to my next important point. <laughs> Municipal albergues are first come, first served. My tip, if you're a slower walker walking in busier times, consider leaving early or staying off stage. That way you can beat the crowds. If you arrive at the albergue and it's full, the people working there, known as hospitaleros, they will try and accommodate you. And if they can't, they'll help you try and find a bed elsewhere. Albergues have a curfew and some municipal albergues are absolutely ruthless with their closing times. I met a pilgrim in Burgos who'd been locked out of the municipal albergue for being five minutes late. They simply refused to unlock the door and he had to stay in a hotel. My tip, <laughs> and I might get some heat for this, but if you think you're going to be late, get the mm. phone number mm. of a pilgrim mm. inside the albergue mm. who can let mm. you in. Shh. Or you could be a good pilgrim and be back before curfew. 
I'll let you decide what sort of pilgrim you want to be. Now, before you start walking your Camino, you need to know what to pack, and more importantly, how to pack lightly, because a heavy pack can lead to injury, which will ruin your Camino. I've made this helpful video, which shows you how to pack lightly, so you can have an amazing Camino experience. I really recommend giving it a watch.